Hi everyone and welcome to this video. I'm going to show you how to create a Creable material I created for November in 2019. This material will be for cycles specifically, because we need the displacement option of cycles. Let's start with a basic cube and a few subdivision modifiers. We will set the first subdivision modifier to simple and the subdivision values to 6. And for the second subdivision modifier we will set the render value to 3 and the viewport value to 2. Now we can switch to the shading tab and change a few settings. First we choose cycles as our render engine, then switch the look under color management to medium high contrast and enable the transparent option under film to get a transparent background. For the lighting I set up a HDRI from HDRI Haven which will be linked in the description. With this done we can create a new material and name it accordingly. With the principal shader already set up we add a texture coordinate node as a starting point for our procedural textures. Then we add a Voronoi texture for some procedural cells and use the object coordinate system. We change Euclidean to Chebyshev and decrease the scale factor to 2. Now we duplicate this node two more times to get some variations. With the node wrangler enabled you can press Ctrl, Shift and D to keep the input connections of the node. For the first duplicate we set the scale to 3 and for the second duplicate we set it to 6. We add three map range nodes and connect them to the color outputs of the textures. We could also use color ramps for this but the map range works as well. Set the from min value to 0.11 and the from max value to 0.83. Let's combine the map range nodes with a mix RGB node and the mode set to add. So we also have control over the add factor. I set the factor to 0.2. For this material I duplicate the Voronoi texture one more time to get even more detail. I set the scale to 12, add a map range node as before and change the from min and from max value to increase the contrast of the values. This time I set them to 0.34 and 0.5. Now we only need to combine the map range node with the nodes before and for this we use another mix RGB node with the mode set to add. To keep the node tree bit organized I place all of the nodes inside a frame and rename it to detail1. To preview the detail we just created we add a displacement node, connect detail1 to the height input and connect the displacement node to the material output node. We also need to change the displacement settings for the material. For this we open the side panel in the shader editor with the N key Look for the settings under options and there you can change the displacement to displacement and bump. If you are now in rendered mode you should see the displacement working. I will also decrease the scale factor of the displacement node to 0.2. Let's start with the secondary detail. For this we will use the Voronoi texture again. But this time instead of cells we will create some dots on the surface. Use the object coordinates as before and set the scale to 8. Now we just need to set the randomness factor to 0 and we get an evenly spaced grid that contains dots. Also this time we will use the distance output of the texture. With the math node set to less than, we can now specify the size of the dots and create a mask. I set the value to 0.12. Let's duplicate this setup, change the scale to 12 and the value of the less than node to 0.1. With one of the Voronoi textures from our primary detail, we create another mask with a greater than node and multiply this mask with our first dots mask to get an even more interesting pattern. We will do the same with our second dots mask, but this time instead of using a greater than node, we will use a color ramp and specify a mask that gets multiplied with the dots. Now we can combine the two dots mask with the add node and preview the result with the displacement node. I also place the dots mask inside the frame to organize the node tree. I will rename this one to detail2. 
Let's combine the two detail masks with a mix RGB node, set to add and control the factor. I choose a value of 0 0.05. I want to control the amount of displacement at the edges of the cube. So we need to create a mask for the edges. I achieved this result with three nodes. First we need a geometry node and divide the normal output by itself. For that we use a vector math node, set the mode to divide and connect the normal output of the geometry node with both inputs of the vector math node. Now we only need one more math node, set the mode to less than and leave the value at 0.5. With another mix RGB node, we can now multiply this mask with our details to control the displacement at the edges of the cube. A value of 0.3 works well here. We can also use the combined details to control the roughness of the principal BSDF shader. For that, we just add another map range and connect the details to the value input. Now we change the to min and to max value of the map range until the surface looks good to us. I will set them to 0.08 and 0.19. Let's add one last Voronoi texture to create some tertiary details. Same as before, we set the scale to 12, change Euclidean to Chebyshev, add a map range node and control the color values of the texture. Set the from min value of the map range to 0.59 and lastly add a bump node to add some bumpiness to the surface. Now you can connect the bump node to the principal BSDF shader and set the strength value to something like 0.2. Now we are going to create the color values of the cube. First, we need a gradient in set direction, so we just add a separate XYZ node and connect the object coordinates to that. With the set output of the separate XYZ node, we just get our linear gradient. Add a map range node and connect the set output to the value input of it. Then change the from min value to minus 1 and the to max value to 0.3. The gradient now ranges from 0 at the bottom to 0.3 at the top of the cube. Add a mix RGB node, connect the map range to the second color input, choose a color value for the first slot that you like and set the mode to linear light. Then set the factor value accordingly. This will be used as our base color for the cube. Now we add an ambient occlusion node and connect the bump output to the normal input of this node. We can use this node to further control our colors. Duplicate the first mix RGB node and connect the output of the first node to the color input of the second node. Now we add a math node and set the function to greater than and connect the ambient occlusion node to it. With the value of the second input we can now define a mask for our colors. Set it to 0.999 and add the output to the factor input of the mix RGB node. We set the mode of the mix RGB node to difference and choose a good looking color for the second slot. Duplicate the mix RGB node one more time. Set the mode to mix and connect the difference mix RGB node to the second color slot. Then connect the ambient occlusion node to the factor input and choose a color for the first color slot. To have more control over the factor, we use another map range node and place it between the connection. This time I set it to smoother step and change from min and from max value to 0.35 and 0.44. That's it for the color. Just connect it to the base color input of the principal BSDF node. You can also change the metallic value of this node to 1 to get a metallic surface. As our last step, we will add some emission to the cube. To do that, add the according emission node and a mix shader. Then mix the emission shader with the principal BSDF shader and choose a color value for the emission node. We can use the ambient occlusion node as a mixing factor as before. 
just duplicate the crate to their node and connect the ambient occlusion node to it. I will set the factor to a small value like 0.014. That's it for this material. You can change all of the values to your liking to achieve different results. Tell me in the comments what you think and stay tuned for more. Bye!